Hello, in this presentation I will talk about the Mian robot, a low-cost 3 degrees of freedom robot with a gripper. In particular, in this video I will explain how to implement a linear and circular trajectory control. This presentation aims three goals. In the first place, I will describe the forward kinematics of the robot to obtain the gripper position from robot joint values. In the second place, I will explain how to implement a control to describe a linear trajectory in the Cartesian space. And finally, I will also explain how to implement a control to create a circular path in the Cartesian space. Please, bear in mind that in order to follow this presentation, it is recommended that you have completed the task to describe it in the previous videos related with the coordinated axis control and point-to-point -point control. In the tables, I have included the dimensions of the most relevant parameters used in the robot kinematics. Indeed, these dimensions were already introduced in the previous video, but I also included here for reference. The forward kinematics are used to compute the position of the robot gripper from joint angles. To compute the gripper position in x and y coordinates, we first need to compute the distance r, that is, how far is the gripper with respect to the joint axis 2 and 3. This distance is obtained by simple trigonometric relationships, as it can be seen in the figure of the, on the right. Once we have obtained the distance r, then we can easily compute the position x and y of the gripper. It's worth mentioning that the computation of those coordinates is not elegant as the classic academic examples because the distances or because this, this coordinate depends on the distances L0 and D5, which are not zero. The height of the gripper, that is the Z coordinate, is obtained from angles Q2 and Q3O, again with simple trigonometric relationships from the figure on the right. The angle Q3O is the angle computed from the four linkage mechanism, as we will see now. Here, I highlight the main elements of this four linkage mechanism to compute the angle Q3O. So, we must first compute the angle phi from the linear relation with the angles Q3, Q, uh, Q2 and Q3, as shown in the formula. Then, once the phi angle is uh, known, we can compute the diagonal distance f using the cosine theorem. Then, dividing this triangle uh, with uh, or form with the sides L2, F and L3i into two right triangles, then we can obtain the angle tau. Also using the cosine theorem, we can compute the angle mu which implies that now we can compute the angle Q3O that was required in the previous formulas. If we, or if you want to describe a linear trajectory, then what we need is to express such trajectory as a line between two points P0 and PT. The distance to point zero will be expressed as a variable S over time. Such distance will be implemented using a cubic trajectory with parameters computed as shown in the slide from some counter conditions such as the velocity at the beginning at the end of the trajectory must be zero and that the overall distance to travel must be the distance between points P0 and PT. To implement a linear movement in the Cartesian space, I propose to implement the move L function equivalent to the instruction under the same name in RAPID. The video on the right shows an example of how it should work this instruction. From the current configuration of the robot, we must compute the gripper position with the forward kinematics to obtain the initial point P0, while the end point is given as an input argument provided in the Cartesian space. Also, we need to provide the trajectory time t. With initial and final Cartesian positions, that is, points P0 and t, then we can generate the linear trajectory in the Cartesian space, as I, as I have previously explained. For each of the trajectory points in the Cartesian space, then we need to compute the equivalent joint configuration using the inverse kinematic of the robot. 
and then move the servos to the corresponding positions. Many industrial robots also allow circular movements from three points positions. The first point of, uh, of all these points, P0, represents actually the current position of the robot, while the other two points, P1 and P2, are given positions. Obviously, the points must meet some conditions to be able to generate a circular path, but this is out of the scope of this presentation, so we will assume that, for example or for instance, the points are not aligned on the same line. The computation of a circular path in a 3D space is somehow more tricky than the simple case in 2D space, but in any case, given that three points always are contained in a plane, it's just a matter of obtaining a reference frame position at P0 so that the projection of the remainder of points are contained in the x, y axis of the new reference frame. So, to do this, we must first compute a transformation matrix of said reference frame and obtain the coordinates of the points expressed in the new reference frame P1 tilde and P2 tilde. From the coordinates of these points, then we can obtain the coordinates of the center of the circle and also its radius. All the maths for all these geometric relations are here expressed and included in this slide. Once the local points uh, with respect to the new reference frame have been obtained, now the goal is to generate a trajectory expressed over the time as a function of the angle theta using the center of a circle. So we can define this uh, 2D circular path expressed as a point P tilde from or using the, the radius of the circle and also the center of the circle as a function over time. And then with this two-dimensional path, then we can compute the three-dimensional path using the previously obtained transformation. The angle theta can be expressed again as a cubic trajectory over time with boundary conditions as indicated here, which leads to parameters A, B, C and D as indicated in the formulas. It's worth mentioning that the final angle theta t can have two possible solutions, so we must check which is the, the correct one. So for instance, if after computing one of the solutions of theta t, uh, then we evaluate the expression for the p tilde at time t and the resulting point does not match with the point p2 tilde, then it means that we must use the other condition. Here I show the definition of the move c function that you must implement. This function uh, must reproduce the same or the same uh, as the instruction uh, in Rapid under the same name. And as it can be seen in the video, first it describes a horizontal circular path described in the xy plane and then it performs a circular path defined in the xz plane. To implement the MoveC uh, function, you must first compute the transformation associated with the three points, being the first point computed from the current gripper position that is actually provided with the current joint configuration using the forward kinematics. Once the transformation is obtained, then you need to compute, remember, the center and the radius of the circle, and then you need to compute the trajectory using all these three points. At each of the points of this circular path, we need to compute or to apply the inverse kinematic formulas to obtain the joint angles that were explained in a previous video. In this presentation, I have explained how to implement the linear and circular trajectory control for the Mian robot. Thank you very much.